Welcome to The Secret Place with Steph Abene, devotions for hungry hearts and searching souls. Hi there, it's Stepha in The Secret Place. I'm glad you've come back. I'm here to talk to you today from a small passage from this book by Henry Nouwen called Here and Now, Living in the Spirit. Um, it was graciously given to me by a, a new friend of mine named Karen. Woohoo! Shout out to Karen. I love this book, of course, All Things Nuan. And today's passage is about the choice for joy. So here it is on um, page 27. It might sound strange to say that joy is the result of our choices. We often imagine that some people are luckier than others and that their joy or sorrow depends on the circumstances of their life over which they have no control. However, we do have a choice not so much in regard to the circumstances of our life, but in regard to the way we respond to those circumstances. Two people can be the victims of the same accident. For the one, it becomes a source of resentment. For the other, a source of gratitude. The external circumstances are the same, but the choice of response is completely different. Some people become bitter as they grow old. Others grow old joyfully. That doesn't mean that the life of those who become bitter was harder than the life of those who become joyful. It means that different choices were made, inner choices, choices of the heart. It's important to become aware that at every moment of our life, we have an opportunity, an opportunity to choose joy. Life has many sides to it. There are always sorrowful and joyful sides to the reality we live. And so we have a choice to live the moment as a cause for resentment or as a cause for joy. It is a choice that our true freedom lies. It is in this choice that our true freedom lies. And that freedom is, in the final analysis, the freedom to love. Sometimes now, in, I mean, in the depths of his understanding and his life choices, his experience um, takes us, takes the reader to places like we, we've never been before, or perhaps we've been there, we've camped out in that place, um, but we've traveled on. Um, one thing I know about Henry Nouwen is I always find myself moved when I'm reading his work. And I was thinking about joy uh, this week quite a bit because I've had a few little flickers of joy uh, come and ignite my heart the past, um, the past couple of weeks here and there. And, um, you know, it's in the midst of this greater sorrow of loss that I feel this year. And uh, I've been thinking about it meditating on it. And again, as I said last week in The Secret Place, thinking about all of you, how some of you are really, really in the thick of the sorrow, really in the thick of um, perhaps even depression or just pain, emotional pain. And I feel all that. I mean, one of the things I can never get away from in my life is this like this empathy that I have. I, I sometimes more than I even should, more than you know, I just feel it so much. And I, I keep thinking about all the people who are feeling not joyful this season, this Christmas season, and, um, and feeling with them and for them and praying for them. And so I was thinking about joy, especially in those moments in the last couple of weeks where that flicker of joy has, has returned, like the flame of joy has flickered again here and there. I, I saw some pictures of my grandchildren and that brought light and joy to my heart. Uh, a couple of things uh, happened at work and with colleagues that have been exciting and fun and felt a little flicker of joy return. And I think, you know, it, it's such a strange dichotomy. So many things in life, right? Have that tension, that push and pull. But the idea of joy and sorrow, I think, are important to talk about. Um, and so that's what I thought I'd, I'd do today, just just talk about how it's been for me. I think of joy, and I think in pictures. You already know that if you've been watching The Secret Place. I think in pictures, and I think of joy in a sense like a coat of many colors, right? If you know the biblical account in the Old Testament of Joseph and the coat of many colors, or the popularized show from Broadway, um, about that coat of many colors. When I think of wearing that coat, it's joyful. It's many colors. It's, it keeps you warm in the winter. And especially in this very cold, almost winter that we've been having in Florida the last two weeks where it's been like 58 and 60. 
ha 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 just kidding but it has been it, it hasn't been super warm down here but when it is cold and chilly uh wherever you are it's so nice to put that that uh, that warm coat on isn't it um and so i think of joy sometimes it's the joy that you feel of that beautiful coat that many colored coat that's keeping you warm if you think of joy as a coat um, and then you stick your hands in the pockets what do you feel but they're often pockets of sorrow they are pockets of sorrow so on the, in the coat of joy are pockets and they're pockets of pain or sorrow they're woven into the coat they're inseparable you know when you open your heart to joy to something that could bring you inexplicable joy you may not know it but you're opening your heart also to potential pain the risk of being disappointed or rejected or um, some kind of pain, emotional heartache. But we do it anyway, right? We generally open our heart to joy because there's something wonderful about joy. Joy helps our heart take flight and makes anything we're doing easier. Burdens are lifted when we're walking in joy, right? But I want to say that... Um, there are some of us that, um, and maybe some of you listening, who don't ever experience joy. And it's not because there's not enough joy to go around. There's plenty of joy to go around. There's the joy of the Lord that is our strength. And what could that ever mean if the joy of the Lord is our strength? But we've got to lay hold of it. We've got to apprehend it. It doesn't just come out of nowhere. And I think that's what Nowen meant when he was talking about joy being a choice. We've got to decide, uh, no, I want to be joyful. That doesn't mean putting on joy like a facade. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about opening our arms to joy, opening our hearts to joy, opening our minds and our lips to gratitude, being thankful for what we have. Joy comes that way. And yet it comes uh, very often without the understanding that sorrow is involved or sorrow could easily be involved. But when I've been uh, sticking my hands in that um, coat of joy this past few weeks, sticking my hands in the pocket of sorrow, feeling feeling the sorrow so deeply of uh, the loss that I've been going through this past um, year, 2019, um, I realized that it's part of it. But it's also my job to take my hands out and lift them up and receive the joy and say, thank you, God. Thank you for what you've given me. Thank you for the gift that you've given me of my friendships. Even though I maybe don't see my closest friends as often as I want to and they live far, far away, instead of focusing on, oh, I never get to see my closest friends. I miss them so much. My life is shallower without them. No, it's thank you, God. Thank you, God, for my friendships, the deep friendships you have wrought in my life throughout many, many years. Thank you for them. Thank you for them and bless them. Bless those wonderful women. Um, it's making that choice to move from what we don't have to what we do have. And we have a God who made us, who wants us to walk in joy. So let's, let's do it. Let's make a pact to do it, even in the midst of sorrow. It's like sometimes in acknowledging the sorrow and weeping or um, really feeling the feelings of sorrow and sadness, then there comes a point where we have to take our hands out of, out of our pockets and lift them up in praise and in worship and in thanksgiving, in gratitude. So I want to stir you up this week and remind you that we both have a choice for joy. And that doesn't mean that we ever, ever have to walk around like little joy machines, you know, Energizer Buddy Joy, Bunny Joy machines. Mm -mm. No, no, that would be false. That would be wrong. But to receive the fact that joy and sorrow are two parts of the same garment, they're woven together. And it's, use it's useless to say, oh, I wish it wasn't so. I wish it could all be joy. But it's not like that. That's not what life is all about. So dealing with life, being a realist, dealing with it instead of living in a fantasy of, you know, it should be joyous all the time is really what helps us walk in a more even keel, find our footing and be able to 
love on others and encourage others as they're experiencing joy, even if we're not, even if we're not. So as we get ready to welcome the new year, um, let's go forward in 2020. Um, wow, 2020, that's a big deal. Let's go, let's go forward in that with hope and the knowledge that joy and sorrow are found together. Okay. And in the meantime, I wish you a very, very wonderful end of the year and beginning of the new year. This is Stefa in The Secret Place. Bless you. Bye-bye now. Breathe, listen, and receive. Take a moment to soak it all in. Until next time.